Okay, so here we are. Beautiful day. What is it? Uh, early November. Outside of Springfield, Missouri. So I've got this gate. I think it's 10 feet wide. But as you see back there, I have a trailer that's nine and a half feet wide. So that gives me like three inches on each side. And the challenge with that is you're so close to the edges, you know, you take in consideration, I've got a, a 21 foot long truck, 27 foot long trailer. And what we want to do is avoid doing stuff like that. Maybe you can't see that, but right through there is damage from, I think that's a mailbox. And I know that right there is fence. <laughs> so we're gonna put in a 16 foot wide gate. So it'll be two eight feet gates, probably run some wheels on the outside edge so that it'll help support the weight. So here we are, 16 feet. I'm gonna put this level on it, mark the, mark the two by fours. I'm gonna go ahead and dig the hole and I'm gonna take this six by six out. I'm just gonna move it over there, huh? I mean, how hard can that be, right? I got my jackhammer to do a bunch of the digging. I got my skill saw to do a bunch of the cutting. All right. Here we go. So if you're wondering how to get that fence post out, we're gonna jackhammer it out of there. We're gonna dig a big hole around it. As you can see, it's got it's got concrete underneath it. Oh man. Maybe I should just cut this thing off, go buy another one. Well, that wasn't so hard. So what do we got there? About two feet set in concrete. Oh yeah, this is gonna be fun. Okay, so we'll fill that one up. And then right here, Right there at that spot. That's where the next hole goes. Okay, so we filled a hole there. And we dug a new hole right here. We're a little more than 24 inches deep. Because I'm going to throw a couple rocks in the bottom of it. Because you don't want the end of the wood post to sit on right on top of dirt so we'll throw a few rocks in there the concrete will go underneath the four by or the looks like it's a six by six post and then we're going to set it back in there we'll pour concrete around it and then uh reattach the fence well no we're gonna have to cut back the fence you see the lines right there all that's going to get cut back but before we put the um, fence post in, I scraped a bunch of the dirt and junk off of it. And I've got some old motor oil from my diesel truck, which makes a great sealer. So we're gonna put some uh, diesel oil on there, set this post in, get it suspended where it's supposed to be, and then we'll pour some concrete around it. So that's all I got for you right now but we're gonna get this concrete in before the day is done. That way tomorrow morning, I'm gonna start building us a couple of big old giant eight foot gates. Okay, new day. As you may be able to see, I have this string lined up here to try to at least make an attempt on getting everything straight. It appears that my fence is leaning a little bit. So I'll probably dig out that other fence post and pull it over and put some new concrete in it. But uh, this is what we got going now. 
I've started, I've got two bags in there already, 80 pound bags. So this is the third 80 pound bag that's going in there. And um, I don't even think it'll completely fill it up, but I'm pretty confident this is gonna be good enough to hold this post up. So anyway, I'm gonna finish putting this third bag in there. And as you may have noticed, I've got some lumber in the back of the truck. I'm gonna start building some gates. Okay, so as usual, I get a little ahead of myself and forgot to film some of this for you. But as you can see, what I've done, I've notched the two by fours. You see here, this one here has been notched as well. They're all notched and I'll slip in another two by four on the other side, which I'm prepping up there. So I'm gonna, I put a few screws in this just to hold it into place. As you can see, I'm going to pre-drill them because I am experiencing some splitting. So I'm going to um, screw this up, screw and glue it. I've taped it diagonally from one corner to the other corner. I'm at about 113 and a eighth, 113 and a quarter inches. A little bit over eight feet wide, but that's okay. I'll make this one and then I'll make adjustments on my next one. So that's how we do it. We got the concrete post put in, poured, and we're good to go. Okay, so here we are next day. Oh, look at, there goes a deer crossing my front yard. Oh yeah, he's got antlers and everything. Ooh, look at him go. All right, anyway, um, yeah. So yesterday you saw I had, you know, these boards put in and then or no this one i added this morning this was put in and i don't know i don't they talk about putting these uprights that go from corner to corner and stuff like that i don't think i really need that i mean this is overlapped glued screwed i think i'm just going to go with this and put it up and if it does get a little weak, I'll just come back and add some stuff on the inside of it. But what do you what do you think? Can we do that? Without putting the the upright things on it, which I could easily do. I just don't think I need to. All right. I'm going to build the other one and keep thinking on this and we'll go from there. Okay. So, as you can see, I finished half of the gate and I even have it mounted. And believe it or not, it is like 100% level and plumb. So I'm very much impressed with myself. These, these bolts gave me a little bit of trouble. I had it set a little bit too low, as you can see, the ground slopes here a little bit. It's only like three inches there, maybe four, five, six inches here. So um, yeah, had a little bit of an issue with that. And then on the other side, this, um, this post here, it's leaning. It's leaning towards, the top is leaning to the right. So my top measurement's like 90 inches, my bottom's like 91 inches. So I think I'm gonna to try to make an adjustment with the framing. Although the one of the reasons why I purchased these types of hinges is if it's not completely level, what you can do is you just screw these in or out by bringing this hinge this direction, it's gonna tip it down and bringing it the other direction will bring it back up. So. They're pretty handy and they're pretty sturdy and they're much easier for one person to take a big gate and set it in place than it is trying to take a regular hinge like you see right here. Now see, I'll tell you something interesting. The reason these hinges are here, it, it, because it was easy at the time. I'll tell you a little secret. Here's what they do. When they build these gates, they literally just build the fence all the way across. See, this is just a fence board. 
and then they put the hinge on it and then they cut the board. See, so it's all in place. So it makes putting those hinges on much easier. And that's how they did it all the way over here too. Same thing. They just put the, build the fence completely across it. And then, um, yeah, then cut, put the hinge on and cut it apart. So pretty simple. So now we're up here in the back of the truck again. Let's go back up here. And this is our little work area. <coughs> little Dodge truck. It, it gets used for everything. Workbench, tow vehicle. So here we're up here. And if you, I didn't actually show you how I do this, but this is how you get these grooves cut in. You notch it out. You just set your saw at like three quarters of an inch and you just make a bunch of cuts through there. And then I just take this little chisel. Excuse me. I'm not a much of a video guy here, but then I just bust them all loose, chisel it all out, make it all nice and smooth. And then you set the brace in it just like so. So I've got one more to do. And then I'm gonna lay it on the ground and lay a board on it and see if I can reproduce that difference of one inch. Okay, for those of you that don't have fancy table saw with a special bed or a chop saw with a setting on it that allows you to set a depth and all that kind of stuff, real simple. Right here on your skill saw, you got a set of measurements here. Now they're not 100% accurate. As you can see, I'm trying to cut three quarters of an inch and it's not actually lining up. But this is, this is the framer's way of doing things. You don't need a fancy skill saw or, or a mitered saw or, or a lightweight cordless saw. What you need is a, just a good old fashioned skill saw and a little bit of gitter. Down. At least that's how I do it. Okay, so I haven't shown much detail of what we're doing here. So I went ahead and got the tripod out and we're gonna we're gonna show you how we cut we cut all these grooves here. Now you'll look at that and you go, wow, that looks pretty cool, pretty nice, but here's all there is to it. Just mark out where your your posts are gonna go or your braces or whatnot. And um, you don't need a special table saw with a special bit or a chop saw with a, a setting to measure height. All you need is a skill saw or 
you need sort of a rotating saw, you know? You don't need a fancy cordless one with all this, that, and the other thing. This is a framer saw. And yeah, it's heavy. Yeah, but you know what? It's powerful. So, and here's all you do. I don't know if you can see the lines, but there's the lines. I'm in a little bit of a shadow here, so you're not going to see all of it perfectly, but... And then I give it a little scrapey scrapey. like you know 20 more times or something and uh and you'll have it so there you go okay so here we've got our two basic frames all laid out screwed glued the whole deal uh i even pre-drilled the holes for the hinge bracket so when i put the few planks on it in order to get the uh the other this bracket on i can go from the back side and drill through those uh one by four planks now we're going to use this little tool here which is going to allow me to countersink these screws go in diagonally so let's see if we can shoot just a quick little video here What you do is you set it on inch and a half. There's two ways to put this slider in, so pay attention. So we're gonna put this up here like so. Put a little clamp on it to hold it in place, which you don't have to, but it makes it a little easier. And then simple. be careful we don't want our screws to hit each other it's overlapping like that so we'll give it a try and see what happens see the screws are going to go in set themselves and screw through the other side make it all nice and tight so let's go see if we can put one of these in
throw a little, little glue in there just for grins. It may all get scraped off when I squeeze this thing in there, but you know what? Better to have tried and failed than to have failed trying. That's how we do it. Just go around, screw and glue it, and get her finished up. Well, if you've noticed, there's no, there's no wood in the back of my truck. It all got transferred over to here. So as you can see, I put all the diagonal cross members they say you start at the top hinge side and go that direction. So I'm trying to follow the instructions. Now, I have seen online, you may have as well, they say don't run these angle pieces at anything more than a 45 degree angle. So not 50, not 60. Now, as you can see, these are, are off, okay? But if you had felt the cinching that took place when I screwed these things down to each side i'm sure that the strength i added to especially that center joint and all these others is far more is going to be taken away than not running those at a 45. and of course here's the other one this is my top hinge side over here as i told you the other day i pre-drilled uh most of the holes so tomorrow it'll just be a matter of putting in i think three or maybe four pickets on this side so the hinge can go on top of it and i'm gonna throw these gates up and then once i get the gates up then i'll make a special tool show you how to do that to make sure my pickets all go on nice and level and a horizontal leveling what i'm referring to not plumb but level and um yeah we're gonna have some really nice heavy duty non-sag just awesome gates and if it seems too heavy i might even i might even come back and add a third hinge here. So we'll see how it goes. Well, here's our first gate, our first attempt to put this thing up. So I wanna wheel her on around back and see if she wants to fit. Okay, there's the first gate. It's all plumb and square and all that stuff until that's the old gate of course but until we get the second gate up and then we'll start this level plumb thing all over again but anyway i just gotta say i love these new hinges i mean look at this gate just woo, sweet and easy it's just sweet and easy um yeah so i just love it and I think I might, once I get this done, I might come back and throw another hinge there. What do you think? I think I might. Like, that might be a good idea. Yeah, I know. I used old lumber. I don't care. I mean, look at this. It's all old lumber. And as you know, if you follow any of my stuff I put out there, I'll get my, uh, my spray rig out here, maybe later on this, still this year. And I'll put another coat of sealer on this gate. 
or fence. Well, the gate's got to be done, definitely. But, so, now, you guys know what I use as sealer, don't you? Take a look at my gate. Used diesel oil. Think about it. It's the same thing that goes in all of your deck stains, your sealers, your uh, linseed oil. It's oil. Put some, put some oil on it. That's what I do. Oil that sucker. Well, so here we got it. So I got the gate tongue, and I know the first thing you're going to say is, hey, they're not even. No, you're right. They're not even. They're not even because it's on a slope. It's sloping downhill. So I guess I could have made the gates at an angle and made them slope. But I preferred to have my gates square and plumb up against the posts than not. Now, I will tell you there's an easier way to do this than what I did. And here's how it is. So... If you look here, you're gonna see this lateral two by four running all the way out. You see, so what these fencing contractors do, I'm gonna tip you off here. It's, you know, it's what they do. So what they do is that they build a fence without a gate in it. So in other words, this two by four, it ran out this side it ran all the way towards the middle to where the next fence post was, which was actually this gate post back here. And then and you see how it's up high over there on that side? See how high that two by four is? So that's how it worked. That two by four ran all the way down here to this two by four. Same with the middle one. And the same with the bottom one. Then what they did was then they just framed in a gate into the middle of it. And then they put their hinges on and cut the two by fours loose. Now that would have been easy. I could have done that. Gotten some, you know, this is 16 foot gate. So I could have gotten like some 20 foot two by fours, run it straight all the way across, framed in some, you know, some vertical posts, you know, up and down. And, um, you know, gone ahead and put my, my lateral, you know, supports and all that stuff into it. And then you come back and you cut it in the middle and you cut it on each end. And now you got a gate or two gates, whatever you want. But now you have two gates that are angled. So as that gate swings out, that bottom part right there, it might hit the ground. And the same with this one. If it's if it was at an angle reaching up, it will swing out and it may be a foot off the ground out there. You know, I don't know. So I'm not trying to teach you how to do anything, guys. I'm just showing you what I did. So I hope it all helps. I'm going to start putting some one buys on it and get this thing finished up. Okay, so you'll see a lot of these guys, they have these special tools that will actually lay on top of the pickets, like a two by four with a couple of edges on it. So it lays flat and they just slide the, they'll just slide the pickets up underneath the edge of it. Well, because I'm dealing with a sloping fence and my gate is, is level and, and plumb, um, I just put a string line. I don't know if you can see it, but there she is. There's the string line. This from here, here to here. And I ran it all the way over to this side and it'll sit up on top of here. And then, uh, then I'll just run my picker right up to the edge of the line. As you can see, I'm reusing some of my old lumber. It's an old gate. It's an old, or it's a new gate with an old fence. So we want it to blend in a little bit. So, and I, like I said before, I'll, uh, I'll coat this with some more diesel oil. It'll darken it up and it'll just be beautiful. But more important, you saw how freely it opened and closed. 
that's the main topic right there, baby. Well, here we are. As you can see, I, I got the gate finished up. And yeah, I used some of the old wood. It's kind of spotty. I hit it with a power washer. Give it another good coat of used diesel oil. My favorite hack. So if you haven't ever heard of that, next time you're buying treatment oils or coatings or stains or preservatives for your gates and fences and wood products, look at the ingredients on the can. Some of them are waterborne nowadays. Some of them are just old fashioned oil borne, like linseed oil. What is it? It's oil. You can get diesel oil for free. Okay, so anyway, this is the outside. One thing I must stress, I love these hinges. You know, they're just so smooth, so easy. They hold so much weight. I've got the uh, latches and hardware all put on. I've got uh, this latch work, as I've showed you in previous videos. All of these are overlapped. All these corners, even this cross member, overlapped. I use these like, what are they called? Like a pocket jig or something, I think they call it to put these big screws in here. So there's two going that way and two going this way. Again, overlap. I, I can't imagine this thing coming apart. So anyway, that's it. She's all done. Um, super happy. I will have to tell you one funny little story. So I get completely finished yesterday. I clean up all my mess. And then I get ready to close the gates up and call a day. And what do I see? These post holders. These little guys right there. Hold on, let me get you some more light. So, <laughs> I was finishing up and those guys used to be right here. So I'm thinking, all right, it's already like 3.30, almost 4 o'clock. And I usually quit at about 3 or 4. So I'm going, okay, <clears throat> let me just dig them out and move them over and reset them. And then as I raked all the gravel away, I realized they were set in concrete. <laughs> so... Pulled the jackhammer out, hammered those things out. They go down about a foot. So then I had to scrounge some sort of cementaceous type product. I think I used flooring underlayment or something. Mixed a bunch of gravel in it and then set it in there. And I'm pretty sure it's going to set up just fine. But no sense in raking the gravel back to check it. So we're going to move forward. So anyway, it's... um. What is this? November 15th or something like that? I don't know. Every day is a Saturday anymore. But it's time to it's time to mow. I gotta mow in all of these leaves you see back there. A few leaves out here, but mostly back here where these walnut trees are. Lots of leaves. I'm gonna mow all those in and start winterizing my house. So Appreciate you guys watching. I'm sorry a lot of it wasn't very informal on how to do this stuff. There's a lot of great videos out there that I watched is how I was able to kind of put together my scheme on how to build this. Um, I hope it's helpful. Um, and yeah, everybody just have a great day and we'll see you again soon.